All right, today we'll be adjusting valves on a Polaris 425 Magnum. And we're gonna start off by pulling the head cover off here and then also the side cover here. We've got eight, eight, eight millimeter bolts that hold this cover on. We'll pull that off and we've got five eight millimeter bolts to hold this uh, sprocket cover on on this side. Now then we also have a 14 millimeter cap right here and that's gonna let us look down into the flywheel area and on that flywheel you'll, you'll see some marks. But if you pull this cover here, uh, you'll also be able to line this. There's two dots on the top of this cam sprocket here and those will be straight up. And then there's a, a line on the top of, and I'll tip this motor here so you can see it. There's a line at the top of this um, sprocket here that'll be straight up as well. So we'll turn that, and you can, you can do that by pulling this uh, cover here and the recoil cover and, and turning this by hand, or how we're gonna do it is just carefully turn the recoil pull, pull starter until it gets to the spot we want it. And once we get that straight up and down, or these two dots parallel to the top of this head here, we can adjust the valves. And if you're on the right stroke, you should have you should have clearances on both um, the exhaust side and the intake side. So now we've got it to where it needs to be. We take a 10 millimeter wrench. Well, first of all, you can check it, and your specs are here. That's for a Magnum 425, exhaust and intake is gonna be 0 .006 inches, or 0.152 millimeters. So if, if you take your feeler gauge here, and you find the 0 .006 inches, and you slide it underneath of there, you should have, um, you should be able to move this back and forth without any problems, but you also want a little bit of drag there. So this is a little bit loose, and this one here is a little bit loose as well exhaust side is they're they're good so you want a little bit of drag but you want to still be able to get your feeler gauge underneath of there and then same way with this exhaust this one's good too so we're going to adjust the intake and what we're going to do is take and, and loosen these lock nuts and what i do is stick my feeler gauge in there take a flat screwdriver and you turn it so that this feeler gauge is snug Again, not too tight, not too loose. Make sure it's snug. And then you take your 10 millimeter, and I just leave my feeler gauge in there, and turn it. Now you wanna watch this adjuster screw here so that it doesn't turn. And if it does turn, you wanna loosen it back up, readjust it, and then try again. So we've got the feeler gauge in there, now there's some drag on it, so we're good there. Make sure that this lock nut is tight, but the very last thing you wanna do is check it to make sure your tolerances haven't changed. So we've got this one here, well, same thing, we'll stick the filler gauge in there. We'll go ahead and turn this down to where it needs to be. Make sure there's some drag. If there's, if there's good drag but not too tight, we'll tighten this up. And you see there that, that adjuster screw moved. So I've got my feeler gauge in there too tight. Now what you can do is set your feeler gauge there, loosen it up and get it to just to where that feeler gauge start to slide out of there. Make sure your tolerances are good. Now you can take and hold this, this adjuster screw in place and tighten it up. Now we've got good drag on that intake valve, but not too much. Okay, now what we're gonna wanna do is take and pull this um, pull rope all the way around so that you can feel that the, your exhaust and your intake valves aren't hitting the piston, they aren't hitting each other. Everything's timed just right. Make sure there's no abnormal noises. And then we'll go back together with the covers and we're ready to fire up. You do not have to pull this motor to do this uh, valve clearance check, um, but we're, we have this motor out for other reasons.